friends welcome to my world place at ranaghat west bengal india this is a subluxated cataract the subluxation is from 8 o'clock to 11 o'clock 3 o'clock hours i have taken up this case for surgery the main incision has been placed at 11 o'clock this could be injected into the anterior chamber and now one side port is made at 8 o'clock another side port is made at 2 o'clock and now capsule or axis as I make incision on the capsule I can make out that the there is weak genual and as I do axis there is wrinkling of the anterior capsule in the subluxated area here I come out because the anterior chamber became shallow inject some visco that is this is 2% SPMC and now I introduce the iterator again and complete the eruxis Here goes the iterata forceps, hold the capsular tag and the zonial in this area is okay. This patient has a history of trauma. And now hydro dissection. My plan is to do hydro dissection but not rotate the nucleus at this moment. I want to rotate the nucleus after placing a CTR and I want to place a capsular tension ring that is a CTR after nice hydro. So I am injecting BSAs at multiple points. I want to be sure that hydro dissection has occurred nicely and if the hydro is good application of a capsular tension ring will be easier yes by this time nice hydro has occurred but I don't want to rotate the nucleus by one hand I want to rotate it bi manually after placing the CTR. Now, here goes the CTR, capsular tension ring. It is being introduced through the main wound. And now, how to place the leading end into the equator of the back? I introduce a Sinsky hook through the side port at 3 o'clock. Keep the CTR placed over the surface of the nucleus with the anterior surface of the lens and the leading end has no other option but to go into the capsular bag. Yes, the leading end has gone into the capsular bag. The Sinsky hook is supporting the CTR from above. And now, as, I, as the trailing end goes in, the Sinsky hook is used to place this end in the equator of the capsular bag. And now I want to rotate the nucleus bi manually. But before that I want to inject some visco. This is two percent SPMC and here it is 
two instruments are introduced through the side ports and by the nucleus is rotated clockwise by manually and now the tip of the FECO needle is introduced into the anterior chamber here it goes irrigation is on the tip goes bevel down some superficial cortical lens matter is removed then the handpiece is turned the handpiece is turned with the help of the left hand and then the nucleus is chopped into several pieces this is direct chop the tip is buried into the substance of the nucleus the nucleus is held very firmly and the nucleus is chopped the nucleus is chopped here this free nuclear fragment is emulsified And now this is another fragment FECO power that is ultrasonic energy used in this case is 60 percent flow rate is 40 ml per minute vacuum is 400 millimeter of mercury this is Faro's from Oatley And now this is the last part of the nucleus. Now, whenever there is weak jonule, the posterior capsule has greater tendency to come to the FACO tip. So, in this case, I am going to use a posterior capsule protector it's a thick instrument about one millimeter in width it has a curvature that conforms to the curvature of the posterior capsule we get enough space just over this instrument to emulsify nuclear pieces Yes, the last nuclear piece has been emulsified using CTR to protect the posterior capsule. Now, before coming out, I injected Visco so that the bag doesn't come up. Now I am using bimanual irrigation aspiration and very gently sweeping by tangential movement at the equator and removing the cortex. We should not pull it centrally, you just hold it and we should apply tangential pull at the equator itself, at the phonics of the capsular bag itself. Yes. So a lot of cortex has come out. Without applying CTR we cannot do this if we do this the whole bag may come out now before coming out again irrigation is stopped 
Visco is injected to fill up the capsular bag and then I come out. And the cortex on the left side is to be removed. I used this 23G Simco cannula to remove this cortex. Again, just hold it and don't pull it centrally. Sweep at the equator to and fro tangentially and this will safely remove the cortex. Cortical cleanup is complete. The anti-HMD is formed and now Visco is injected to fill up the AC and the capsular bag and in this case a uh, single piece hydrophobic intraocular lens is being placed in the capsular bag. Here goes the lens. Yes, the lens has gone into the capsular bag. Both the haptics are in the bag. It is being checked by a Sinsky hook. If we can hook Rex's margin just over the haptics, then it is in the capsular bag. And now Visco is being removed with the help of this 23 gauze Simco. First, I irrigate for some time. Go behind the eye well, irrigate the capsular bag, and then I aspirate the capsular bag. Then I come into the anterior chamber and aspirate in the anterior chamber. And thus the visco is clean. And the haptic has rotated. This is some more cleaning of visco by bimanual irrigation aspiration. A lot of visco remains in the capsular bag in the anterior chamber angle we must give quality time to remove these viscolastic substance this is a very minimally edited video only the time of inactivity has been eliminated And now I want to rotate the lens and place the haptic in such a way that the subluxated area gets some support by the haptic of the lens. So I ask for the irrigation and a Sinsky hook irrigation, rotate the lens and now this haptic at 11 o'clock will support the area of subluxation in a better way. The side ports are closed by corneal stromal hydration. This is the final lavage of the anterior chamber. The anterior chamber is 
nicely formed and the case is concluded. Thank you very much for your attention. Hope this video will help you in managing subluxated cataracts.